also scoring from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. I wish you all a very happy new year. Today is my son Dima's birthday. 30 years ago, I got the most wonderful present. Well, one of the two most wonderful presents that I could have got from the good Lord when Dima was born. Takes me right back. But today we're not speaking about my children. Safe to say, I'm awfully sorry. We tried to coordinate our schedules and couldn't because Misha's big night was New Year's Eve, best night of the year for his bar. And they were busy and so was I. I had a house full of friends. So we were never able to coordinate. Sorry about that. But we are coordinating other things now. So without further ado, I am going to plunge right in. Sebastian Reeves says, this was the headline on the Guardian website this morning. That was yesterday, the 2nd of January. Quotes. Prince Harry, I would like my father and my brother back. Duke of Sussex tells ITV it never needed to be this way and I want a family, not an institution. Then it goes on to say, the Duke of Sussex says, I would like to get my father back. I would like to have my brother back. In a preview clip from his forthcoming interview, with the ITV News at 10 presenter, Tom Bradby. You remember Tom Bradby, don't you? <laughs> I'm so Julia Roberts back to nobody has asked me how I am except you. <laughs> the 90 minute program produced by ITN Productions for ITV will broadcast two days before Harry's autobiography, Spare, is published on the 10th of January. In a series of clips cut together with no questions heard, Harry says, It never needed to be this way, and refers to the leaking and the planting, before adding, I want a family, not an institution. He also says, they feel as though it is better to keep us somehow as the villains and that they have shown absolutely no willingness to reconcile, although it is unclear who he refers to. Filmed in California where Harry now lives, ITV said, Harry, the interview, we go into unprecedented depths and details about his life in and outside the royal family. More details soon. <laughs> Before I read what Tracy Ann has to say, because I'm going to answer both questions together, but it does occur to me that as I was reading this out, I remember my mother when we were children saying to another member of the family, why is it everything out of your word mouth is want? <laughs> and there are, there's an awful lot of wanting from Harry, isn't there? Want, want, want. Tracy Ann says, Happy New Year, Lady C. Thank you. I just read that Harry wants his dad and brother back. How will that work? Especially with his book coming out. If the King and the Prince of Wales reconcile with Harry, 
How would the people of the UK feel about that? Good question. It's a hard one. It would mean he could do and say whatever he wants, precisely. No boundaries. Exactly, that's the aim. And expect to stay in the royal circle. Well, of course, it's his birthright. As the dad, I think Charles would love to forgive. But if there is no apology from Harry, then there is no accountability, precisely. I think Harry and his wife would have to show some kind of remorse for any reconciliation to take place. What do you think? Well, this is all very topical. And of course, we're going to be inundated with Harry and Meghan and oh, my pain, my pain, oh, my pain. As if he's the only person who's ever suffered. And indeed, as if his suffering is greater than anybody else's. And hers as well. Because let's remember, her suffering because, you know, nobody's ever asked me if I'm okay. Surrounded by truly deprived people. But their suffering is always greater than anybody else's. Well, I understand. And I'm pretty sure... What I was told is accurate. That the family is watching and waiting and treat and and with a ten foot barge pole. Behind the scenes an awful lot is going on. And I've said this quite a lot, not only in this reign, but in the previous reign. The royal family are not obvious like Meghan Markle. They're not down there in the sewer, identifying as grand when in fact they're really sewer rats. They're not doing that. The they play the long and the gracious game, but don't think it's not effective just because certain members of the public would like an immediate knockout blow and solution. That's not how it works. There are plans afoot, some of which I cannot comment upon because it would not only be unhelpful, but it would violate confidences. But I'm choosing my words very carefully. There are persistent reports from extremely well-placed people some of whom are long-standing friends of Harry's. That Harry and Meghan lead entirely separate lives and are de facto separated, although they are living supposedly and ostensibly and superficially and very occasionally under the same roof. Quite how this marries up with Harry's conduct and Harry's uh, bleating and Harry's self-pity and Harry's aversion of his truth as, in my opinion, he disloyally trashes his family is something else again because my understanding is the family has reacted the way you and I and anybody else with a heart and a head would react which is they are extremely upset and they need to be careful what their response is going to be 
and they practically dare not say anything to Harry because he's such a loose cannon that even at the very moment that you would imagine that he would be trying to make tracks back and he is trying to make tracks back with friends many of whom have spurned his attempts but he's not trying to make tracks back with the family because he is insistent that he is in the right he's always been in the right incidentally harry's always had a massive ego and has always been pretty uncontrollable that was one of the virtues of megan she was able to control him as we've seen but that allure seems to have become water to a large extent under the bridge i really don't see how this situation of what i'm being told has a pat or an easy solution because we are dealing with people who are on the one hand sane sensible solid reasonable and responsible and on the other hand irrational unreasonable egotistical vain and vainglorious and actually plain plump irresponsible and stupid Charles may want everything to end up being all right. I think William has a far more realistic attitude of what the outcome of all of this is going to be. Very sad. But you know, when you're dealing with irrational people, you cannot expect them to be reasonable. Oh dear, I think I feel a cold coming on. I think we also need to focus very firmly on one phrase that Harry has been repeating and that comes directly from Meghan. So we let's be clear about who's dropping poison in whose air and how it then comes out of someone's mouth. And the phrase I am referring to is, it never needed to be this way. That is one of her pathetic, oh, I'm so vulnerable, mantras that she has been dropping in his ear and that he has been repeating she has thrown him the ball to mix my metaphors and he has run with it it never needed to be this way is megan thinking and speaking and harry mouthing her sentiments as for i want a family not an institution he had a family and an institution and you cannot separate a royal family from being a royalty it's unreasonable it's irrational it's dumb it's the sort of thing that brain dead californian hussies who've oh, worked their way up the ladder will try to pass off as reasonable it is unreasonable untenable and ridiculous i hope this conveys some of the sentiments that i think are absolutely fundamental to this issue caroline c says 
Thanks again, Lady C. What do you think the reaction in Montecito was upon hearing the award for Jason North in the New Year's Honours? I think I could hear the wailing hair in Florida. <laughs> My dear, not only did you hear the wailing, but I wonder, has Florida run out of the hair of Turkish virgins? Because I gather California has none because oh, 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 and all that hair got torn out. Oh, in frustration and rage and <sighs> victimhood of everybody hates me. <sighs> and then there was one from person on earth I'm so kind and compassionate ask my daddy. Well, don't ask him, but uh, I write a letter to daddy. I write a letter to daddy. <sighs> yes, I will. I will. I'm going to show everybody that they're wrong. <sighs> Actually, I better not. I better not. Why is the world so cruel? <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, Aurora, come, come. Console Marty on behalf of Megsy Baby. Why is the world so cruel to everybody called Megsy Baby? Three dashes of seasons. <laughs> well, Can you imagine? Can you imagine? But I am going to read out what Julianne Jules says. For the people who think that the king is not dealing with the Morans of Montecito, he is quietly dealing with them. The awards for Sarah Latham and Jason Knopf are a massive middle finger up to them. The Morans of Montecito, obviously. Well, I am inclined to agree. You see, Megan is so crass and unsophisticated. She expects or hopes that where there will either be no response whatsoever, or that the response will be immediate. And therefore, they'll all be gutter snipes in the gutter, throwing dirty water at each other. That's not the way it's done. Both Sarah Latham and Jason Knopf have been made lieutenants of the Royal Victorian Order. This is not a governmental order. This has nothing to do with the government or any political party or parliament. This is totally in the gift of the crown. Totally. A lieutenant of the Royal Victorian Order is the second of the five grades of membership and the order was particularly created so that only the monarch can have any input whatsoever into who receives an award and who becomes a member of the Royal Victorian Order. Well, Jason North has got it, and so has Sarah Latham. Two survivors of the Sussex Survivors Club. <laughs> Jason Knopf is the one who reported Megan for bullying. Sarah Latham was up to hair in the whole matter. This is a direct slap across the face for Meghan and Harry. This is the king and the palace saying, 
we stand by those who made the allegations and who were victims of Meghan and Harry. They have been rewarded for services to the Crown. Their, both their pasts are very checkered in terms of royal duties. Because Jason Knopf started out working for, originally, the four of them, William, Catherine, Meghan, and Harry. They split asunder. He went with William and Catherine. They, Jason Knopf was also the person whom Meghan used as the conduit, or one of the people, I should say, to provide information to Amid Scabies and Caroline Durham. Remember when she had to apologize to the court for forgetting? I don't know, I, you know, when I was taught English at school, I was told, you don't use a short word, a long word, if a short word will do. And I don't know why she would use forget when lie is so much shorter. However, Sarah Latham is interesting because she used to work for Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is somebody who Meghan was cultivating. And this is also not only a slap across the face for Meghan, but a shot across the bow so that people understand Hillary Clinton has already chosen right over wrong. Oh, Aurora, please. Go and get me that piece of toast. It's called Megsy Baby. Mm. Susan Aldred says, how can they give a book away to boost numbers and then say it is a bestseller? Oh, some more manipulation and misinformation from the Sussexes. Well, Susan Aldred, in fairness to the Sussexes, it's Penguin Random House that is giving the book away. They have evidently printed the book in massive numbers. Even Costco, <laughs> Costco is going to be pushing the book. All at a knockdown price. I mean, it's rather like going into Van Cleef and Arples and say, oh, could I have that diamond and emerald necklace and earrings? Oh, uh, and Van Cleef says, oh, yes, oh, uh, the price is, just for argument's sake, X dollars. And... It's supposed to be good quality. And the person says, oh, well, no, I paid. And then Van Cleef and Arpel says, actually, no, no, no. We'll sell it to you for two pounds and 20p. I mean, immediately you think, excuse me, what on earth is going on here? The whole thing is a massive marching enterprise which is calculated to present the book as a huge success when it is already a total failure. As simple as that. Roberta Robertson says, 
Megan has no idea what sacrifice means. Roberta Robertson, how could you say that so early in 2023? Megan understands what, what sacrifice is all about. You sacrifice for her. No, 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 she mustn't sacrifice for you. She's got sacrifice down pat. But I get what you mean. And she really doesn't understand. But then people with her personality type never do. Although, remember, she told the Queen, use me as you will, as if the Queen was a John. Very interesting, that comment that she made. Sally Robinson says, Clearly, Lady C, you know someone's putting together a special for us on the real Meghan Markle. Could it possibly be Thomas Jr.? Well, I do know an awful lot of what's happening behind the scenes, I've got to tell you. And, you know, in life, maturation point is always a factor. And therefore, you do not actually prematurely ruin the maturation point. But, yes, Thomas Jr., and Samantha, they've announced it, actually. They are going to be doing a TV sh revelation. That's just one of the many revelations that's about to come out of oh, poor Maxi Baby and age. <laughs> And there they were thinking that those transparent raiments were going to cover the dreadfulness and inadequacy of their nakedness. <laughs> Marie de Meyer says, love your tiara, Lady C. Thank you. It was a present from my mother's sister, Marjorie. Decades ago now. A very fabulous year to you too. Thank you. I am gobsmacked that nobody seems to understand that Harry and Meghan are the bullies. Oh, I think people do. And I think after the honours list, People are going to realize that mm, there are many ways, and no disrespect to treasure and other cat lovers, there are many ways to skin a cat. And Megan is one pussy that's going to get herself totally skinned before she's through. And Harry is another pussycat who is going to find out that, oh, he's going to look very good on the mantelpiece if he's not careful. Saying outright that the Prince of Wales is and insinuating that Princess Kate is as well. Bullies is what she's alluding to. I'm afraid that I have ruined the flow of the question. They know that the royal family is vulnerable and they are taking shameless advantage of that. How vulgar. Well, of course they're vulgarians. You know, the problem with mixing with people who drag you down instead of elevate you spiritually is that you end up being, if not as low as them, far lower than you started out being. Megan is a study in vulgarity. Harry actually always had a naturally vulgar streak in his nature, which came across as the common touch, hail fellow well met. But the flip side of that was a total lack of elegance, a total lack of 
anything elevated. I mean, he could talk the talk and, oh, I just want to dedicate my life to the veterans and all those people in Africa who, of course, he's completely forgotten about. Interesting, but yes, very vulgar, both of them. Tracy A says, Megan cries racism when bullying gay staff. I would call homophobia on Ms. Markle. You know, Tracy A, you're the first person that I am aware of who has made the link between a Megan bullying gay people and justifying it on the grounds of their inadequacy and incompetence and her right to bully them and her justification for bullying them. Is she homophobic? Well, she certainly has one very good friend who's definitely as queer as a coot, as the old expression goes. But I'm not mentioning a thing about anybody whose name begins with M. Not a thing. And certainly she has some very vociferous supporters who, if they're not gay, I don't know who is, but you never know. They could be just plastic. Is she homophobic? Well, she certainly used her femininity as a foil for n exploiting masculine tendencies and masculine desires. So we can say that on some level she's exploitatively heterosexual. Does that make her homophobic? I would have thought she is an equal opportunity opportunist. And anybody who's going to fulfill the role that she assigns to him or her, all that matters is that they deliver the goods and that their gender selection and tastes in those directions are immaterial to her. But I suppose if she can be constantly accusing everybody of racism just because they don't like her character. Gay people who she's bullied should actually be picking up the homophobic stone and hurling it back in her direction. So Tracy A, well spotted. BJ Ammo 8738 says, <laughs> Dear Lady C, I am mixed race. I have been appalled from the very start of this ridiculous relationship at the population that started and have continued to talk about rejoicing about a woman of colour marrying into the British royal family. I do not hear these same people wanting a white person or a black person to marry into the Japanese royal family or the Thai royal family. Why are these same people not wanting a white person to marry into some of the African royal families? There would be outrage if white people said it was about time a white person married into one of those families. This racism disturbs and sickens me. I get angry at racism against white people. No one talks about all the white people taken into slavery in Northern Africa, which far outstrips the number of slaves taken to North America. No one talks about the number of black slaves taken to South America, 
or to the Middle East. So, BJ Ammo, that is a brilliant observation. And it is one that I didn't think of. And not to the best of my knowledge, no one else has thought of so far. And of course, if I said it, I'd be accused of being a racist. But you said it, and you cannot be accused of being a racist. And you're absolutely right. It is a rank racism. This is the problem with the agenda that Meghan and Harry and all their supporters are pushing. It is a racist, anti-white agenda. That is a very destructive. And you're absolutely right. If tomorrow white activists decided that the royal families of Japan, Thailand, Malaysia, Africa should be shut down or have abuse hurled at them because they have not had a member of the Caucasian race intermarry with them. People would think this is outrageous, but the flip side of the coin seems to have attracted a lot of wide coinage. Thank you very much. I hope all the people will take this and run with it, all the people of colour, because this is something that needs to be hammered home. This is another string to the racial harmony bow that we need to have hit bullseye in the interests of racial harmony. Patricia Snyder says, Happy New Year, Lady C. Thank you to you too. You look lovely, half tarted up. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I remain confused about the Sussexes' invasion of their own privacy with their Netflix series. If they are so concerned about privacy, why release this farce at all? They might as well smack their own bottoms with, <laughs> with a paddle <laughs> and scream about being abused. Oh dear, might that be their ambition? They are self-generating. That's what they are. And you hit the nail on the head. Harry and Meghan have no complaints about violating their own privacy. They simply have complaints about anybody else encroaching upon their marketable territory. So the issue isn't really privacy. They have actually made that point that they have a right to determine what is private and anything else that they wish to share with the public they can share but no one else has a right to dig deeper and find out anything more than they want to share. This regrettably was a line of reasoning that Mr. Justice Warby accepted when he ruled against the mail on Sunday in favour of Meghan. Mr. Justice Warby seems not to have understood that if you set up a situation where you are violating your own privacy, 
there has to be a, a reactive right of others not to necessarily violate your privacy, but to make you uncomfortable as they, the media, encroach upon what you regard as your territory. If you want to be private, in other words, you need to remain private. If you want to be public, you need to be public. You can't pick and choose to the extent Harry and Meghan are trying to and have not only tried but succeeded in picking and choosing. This is, you have touched upon a very interesting dichotomy that is not only at the core of Harry and Meghan's conduct, but was at the core, and in my opinion, was the flaw in Mr. Justice Warby's ruling in favor of ha Meghan against the Mail on Sunday and her father. Because what Mr. Justice Warby was effectively saying was that Meghan had the right to be private, but Thomas Markle Sr. didn't have the right to protect himself against her incursions into his privacy. Very complex, very interesting, and really a very layered subject. Zebedee 237 says, Hi, Lady C. I heard that if Harry comes to the coronation of King Charles, he will have to kneel in front of his, his father and pledge allegiance. Is this true? What are your thoughts? Yes, it is true. He will have to pledge allegiance. Well, of course, he pledged allegiance. <clears throat> Sorry and took an oath of loyalty to his commander-in-chief, his grandmother. And we see how he respected that. Mm -hmm. Well, is he going to do it again? I actually was speaking to friends over the New Year, about how resourcefully the king and the royal family are handling the Harry and Meghan problem. And one of the people here who I won't give away his rank because <laughs> that's going to be a real doodle if I do that. But he felt that they are handling the matter very well because Harry and Meghan are being put into a no-win situation because if they come, they have a problem. And if they don't come, they have a problem. The problem with that line of reasoning is Harry and Meghan are wildly inconsistent as are their supporters. It's okay for Harry and Meghan to violate everybody's rights, but not for anybody to protect their own rights against Harry and Meghan. There's a tremendous amount of double standards going on. And they are archetypes of hypocrisy and double standards. Well, if Harry <laughs> takes that vow of allegiance to his father, 
and three weeks later is bleating to Oprah and Gail and Anderson and whomever else, you know, because Harry is, one of his tenets is that the royal family need to accept accountability and they need to be accountable to him and Meghan for the fact that he and Meghan have washed their dirty linen in public, made all sorts of uns unsubstantiated and very vague and damaging statements about the family, and have betrayed not only the ordinary trust that any ordinary family would have in its other members, but have betrayed the institution of the monarchy, the people of the Commonwealth, the citizens of Great Britain, but the person who should apologize isn't Harry and isn't Meghan. So we now have perpetrator as victim and the perpetrator pretending to be the victim demands an apology from his and her victims. Do you see we are dealing with insanity on a global scale? Because I mean this is global. This is very edifying if you use your heart and your head and you examine what's going on and what Harry and Meghan want. He wants his father and his brother back, but they must apologize to him for the wrong he did to them. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't make it up, you really couldn't. And on that note, I will say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell. And remember, please keep the questions and comments coming in. This cannot be done without you. God bless. Happy 2023. Goodbye.